Ezekiel chapter number 15. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, again, the word of the Lord, Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest? The vine, number 6, 2 through 4, Judges 9, 8 through 14. This is, if you ever been in the woods or a forest, this is a, it's hard to describe. It's a plant that just grows in amongst the trees. It's cylinder or uh, it's round and just grows wherever. And you, if you look at the late televisions, you would see Tarzan swinging from it. It's a thing that doesn't produce any fruit. It's not good for anything. Except for what God says. And more of this will be Genesis 49, 22, Deuteronomy 32, 32, Psalms 80, verse 8 to 11, Jeremiah 2, 21, and Hosea 10, 1. Shall wood be taken thereof to do any work? Would a carpenter use the vine? Now God is using an illustration here of this worthless plant for his people. But he's telling you right now is, what are you guys going to do for me? You're absolutely as useless as a vine. Can you go down to the hardware place and say, you know, I like to have uh, birch wood. I like to have some apple wood. Uh, I like to have, you know, oak. And you, they'll take you right to it. You go down to the same place say, you know, give me some vine wood. They may sit there and scratch their head like, what are you talking about? Or will a man, or will men take a pin of it? And I would assume a pin would be a sliver or a thorn to hang a vessel thereon. You're going to go out and take it, you know, grab a piece of it and nail it to your wall and hang your pot and pan on it? No, it's completely useless. And notice how he uses the word vessel. And when, when you read what Paul has to say, we are vessels of God. We are to be clean vessels. And you're saying, you know what? You're not even a vessel. And you're not even good enough to put on the wall to hang a vessel. Well, guess who a vessel would be? Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Isaiah. He says, you know what? It's not even worthy to take these men and put them on you. You as a nation are completely worthless. Imagine if God of love, what would Jesus do? I wouldn't call them by any name. God just told them you're worthless. How's that? He's going to say that about many Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. Behold, it is cast into the fire for fuel. Oh, there's a use. If you want in Israel, in the land of Canaan, if you want good firewood, God says, go out and get you some vine trees. They're good for burning. That's the only thing they're good for. The fire devours both the ends of it. And in the midst of it, it is burned. So the entire thing is burned up. From top to the root. Is it meat for any work? Again, after it's burnt, what can you do with it? Absolutely nothing. From seedling or whatever you want to call this plant, however it starts, to being ashes, there is no good thing of this plant. I don't think you can go down to the, to the greenhouse or any places where they say, I like to get a vine plant. Now, they may show you grapes, but that's not what you want. You want the vine tree. We're not talking about a fruitful vine. We're talking about a weed that grows in the woods. Behold, when it was whole, one piece, it was meat for no work. How much less shall it be meat Yet for any work, when the fire has devoured it and is burnt. All right, this piece of wood here is good for nothing. All right, what more are you going to do when it's when burnt? Nothing. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, As the vine tree among the trees of the forest, 
which I have given to the fire for fuel. Look, look what God just said. I made a vine tree for one purpose. I made it so you can have a fire. Everything has a reason in God's eyes, in God's making, in God's creativity. He didn't make nothing for vain. He made that vine. And why does the thing grow all over the forest? Why? Because God said it's for fire. I'll give it to you to keep your house warm, to cook your dinner on it. So will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He just told you right there what this vine tree is about. That vine tree is a representation of the inhabitants of Jerusalem in Jeremiah and Ezekiel's time. And what good are you? You're absolutely good for nothing. And what am I going to do with you? You're going to hell. What good are you going to be in hell? Absolutely nothing. Want to tell that to a Jehovah Witness? Eight verses you've learned about hell. What have we been talking about in 14, 14 chapters? Idolatry. Disobedience to God. What is their end? They are of no use to God at all, and they'll burn in hell. And even in hell, they'll have no use. I will set my face against them. Jeremiah 52, 6, and Jer uh, 52, 6 12, and 13. They shall go out from one fire. The Babylonians coming in and burning the city and the houses. Now watch this. And another fire should devour them. Fire upon fire upon fire and wake up and wake up lake of fire. You shall know that I am. Is that the time you want to know that God is God? When everything's been destroyed, you've been burned and dead. To know that, all right, the great white throne judgment. Oh, okay, you're God. Okay, fall down and, and worship my son. Thou art Jesus Christ, the Lord of lords. Now depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, to the lake which burneth with fire for all eternity. That's too late. You know? You have gotten on God's wrong side. You have sinned. You have rebelled. You have disobeyed God. Yet, one day, you will know that God is God. That's what the Bible says. I'm an atheist. You will know one day that I am the Lord. And that's God, not me. You'll know it too late. On April 1987, I knew that the Lord is God. When I knelt down and asked Jesus Christ to save me. And you know what? I am never, ever, 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 ever going to be sorry for that day. I'll have losses at the judgment seat of Christ. I'll have ashes. I may get some crowns. But to know that I am the Lord, I will forever dwell with him based upon the Lord Jesus Christ and the, and the testimony of the gospel that he died for my sins, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that I had put my faith and trust in his blood and in his merits and not my own. I know that God is God. I know it on the good side. I've got family members who have passed away, and I don't think they know the Lord before they died. I've shown them. I have given them testimony, just like Ezekiel, just like Jeremiah, where when I set my face against them. Can you imagine the day that you see God's face and then you're cast off in eternity? The last thing you see is God. The last thing you will see is the Lord Jesus Christ, which you have rejected. says there was a great white throne. There's no Jerusalem. New Jerusalem comes after. The new heavens and new earth come after that. You don't even get a glimpse of heaven at the great white throne. Judgment. You'll see the saints. You'll see the angels. And that's it. You face God. Then you go off a place that burns forever and ever and ever. And there's never no light in there. Because God is light. 
and I will make the land desolate, because they have committed a trespass, saith the Lord. Why do you go to hell? Because you have trespassed, you have not done what God has told you to do. God says today, in order to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why is a man in hell today? Because he has not done what God has told him to do. He has trespassed against Jesus Christ. The fire is fire, and, and when Jesus tells parables, you know, the, the tares are the people of the world, the wheat is, are the saints, and the angels are the angels, and the fire is the fire. And God's people in chapter 15 are good for nothing. And if you're good for nothing, as, a, as you know, you, you put the grass on the rooftop, Jesus says, the next day it's burned. When you're good for nothing in God's eyes, you end up with fire. He said, what about a Christian? He's when he's good for nothing. Yeah, but his merits are not his merits to Lord Jesus Christ. He has a fire of works, not himself. Your works are put to the fire by the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. And you can suffer loss. Your works can be good for nothing, but you are in Christ. You see what Christ has protected you. Outside of Christ, you and your works are put to the fire. And you will go into hell cleansing yourself as you believe you can. problem is it takes eternity for you to be cleansed. So when God speaks of fire in the Bible, he speaks of fire. 